Banksy's one of the most famous artists on the planet, and there's good reason. He's got some really cool stencil designs, and these are actually pretty easy to make, at least technically, in Inkscape. And so in this video, I'm going to walk through how you can make your own Banksy style design, very basic stencil, and that's what Inkscape's really good at doing. The actual design that we're going to make is this. It's a guy falling, there's an earth, and then there's a concrete background. So really easy to do. Took me about five minutes, and it's pretty fun too. Let's jump in. Okay, so just like a chef, before they make the meal, they have to go out and get the groceries, and that's what we're going to do right now. I'm on Pixabay, and the groceries we're going to be getting are the base images for the Banksy style art. So Pixabay is a free website. All of these images that you're going to see on Pixabay are all good for commercial use. And I've typed into the search window, person, and I'm just going to hit the search button, and let's see what comes up. I'm going to use this first one here. It's a picture of a man falling, and I like this one because there's not a huge background, so if I make a stencil out of this, it's going to be relatively easy. So I'm just going to click the free download button over on the right-hand side, and from there I can pick the size of the image that I would like to download. Okay, so now I'm inside of Inkscape, and I'm just going to open up my picture that I downloaded from Pixabay, File Open, and we can see there's my picture. I'm just going to select it, and then I'm going to go to Path, Trace Bitmap. That's going to open up my little Trace Bitmap window over here. Now I can click this Update button to get sort of an idea of how dark it's going to be. And I'm going to be monkeying with this brightness threshold. And if I make it more dark, in other words, the number is higher, when I click Update, you'll see that black wave is starting to creep along. And that's because of the darkness of the picture at the bottom. So I'm actually going to go the opposite direction. I'm going to go lighter, and I'll click Update. And really, I want to get rid of as much of the black as possible. But I'm going to just, I'm going to make it a little bit darker just to show you how we can clean it up in case you have a picture that's a bit more complicated. So I'm going to click the Apply button now to do the trace. So now we can see the trace there. I'm going to select my image, my original photo. And you can just right click and copy. You can click the Delete key, whatever you need to do. But now I've got that removed. So there's my actual image now. And I've got this black down at the bottom. Now you may want to keep that, but if you want to get rid of it, it's pretty easy to do. With my actual stencil now selected, this is a vector file. I'm going to go over to the left hand side and click Edit Paths by Node. And now I'm going to see all of the nodes that make up this image. Now I, what I can do is just simply with my mouse highlight whatever nodes I want to get rid of and then just click the Delete key. Now you'll notice I didn't select them all, but as I go along here I can get rid of them. There's a couple little stragglers there. And now I'm left with only my actual stencil design. Now let's say you wanted to make a, a 8 and a half by 11 print. So I'm going to go to File, Document Properties, and then over on the right hand side I can actually do a custom size over here and I'm going to do inches and then my width is going to be 8.5 inches wide and 11 inches tall. And you can see now the actual picture has stayed the same, but my little page has changed. So now I can just simply make this smaller, move it inside my page, zoom in a bit more, and now I've got my 8.5 by 11 looking pretty decent. And there's my actual stencil image that I've got that's going to form my base picture. Now I'm going to add a picture of the earth right above it. So you don't have to use a photograph if you don't want to. I'm on a site here called SVG SILH, and the SILH stands for silhouette. So over on the right hand side, I'm going to type in the word earth, and I can see now I get a bunch of earth pictures that come back, and now I can select an earth silhouette. Okay, it took me a little while, but on page four here, I found this map, this worldwide global map. I'm going to click on that. This is free to use as well. These are all public domain. Everything here is released under Creative Commons CC0, which is public domain. And so I'm just going to uh, download the SVG file. Okay, so I'm back in Inkscape now, and I'd like to import a second image to go with my falling man. So I'm going to go File, and then I'm going to go to Import, and then I'm going to select my actual SVG file. So here's my SVG file. It's a true vector. Now when I try to import it, it's going to say include SVG image as an editable object. I'll say yes. There's a few different options, but I'm just going to pick the SVG and I'll click OK. There it is. It pops up. And now I can hold down the control key and grab one of the corners and I can make it smaller. And it keeps the aspect ratio locked, which is nice as well. Because this is a vector, I could actually change the color if I wanted. Simply by clicking the uh, color palette down below, I can make this actually any color I want. For Banksy's uh, 
style artwork, I'm actually not going to change the color, but that's a nice tip just in case you ever need to change the color. So I'm going to make this a bit smaller, move it over here, and I'm going to just pop it right there, for example. Now, if you want to rotate it, simply click it again, and you'll see the little arrows come up here on the edges, and then you can just click it, and you can make it slightly rotated if that's what you'd like to do. So there we go. Okay, so, so far, so good. We've got two stencils now sitting just on a white background. But as we all know, Banksy's famous for doing stencil artwork on concrete. So the third piece is I'm going to put in a piece of concrete now as a background. All right, and we're back on Pixabay. And I like this one here. This is an aged backdrop. So I'm just going to click that and I can just do a free download and I will pull this now and put that into Inkscape. All right, and now we're back into Inkscape and I'm going to create a new layer first. So I'm going to go up to layer and I'm going to go add layer. And then I'm going to move the position below current and I'm going to change the name of the layer. I'm going to type in the word concrete. So that's going to be my new layer. So now I've actually got two layers. So down at the bottom now we can see there's two layers. And now I'm in the concrete layer. Now I will go file and import. I will select my picture. And we can see now it's moved it in underneath. So now I'm going to just make this a bit smaller. Move this right over top of the of the uh, page. So here's my page and then I'm just going to drag this down. So now I've got my picture with my guy here. Now if I want to make sure that this is the size that I need, there's a little opacity down on the bottom left and I can change the opacity just by holding it down and we can see now we can start to see the page in, in the background. So you may want to work from front to back and use your background at the end. But if you're not, if you really want to have the background there while you're working, just change the opacity down. And then when you're done, just move it back up to hundred and that way it'll, it'll look pretty good. Now I'm going to select my guy and I'm going to change his opacity. This is the key now to make it really look like a Banksy print. You want to change the opacity typically down to about say 70 or 65%. And then you're going to change the earth. I'm going to click on that. Again, I'm going to move that down to be the exact same in this case, 65%. Then I'm going to change my actual background and move that back up to 100%. So now you can see it looks like it's been painted onto the concrete. There's no uh, just black sitting on top of it. So this is similar, like in Photoshop, it's pretty easy to do this. You could change the style of the layer and you can do this in, in Affinity Photo as well. But in Inkscape, it's kind of tough. But if you do a, a silhouette and you just change the opacity, then you can get yourself looking pretty good here. Okay, and that's it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this now to my actual print. So over on the right hand side, there's a little export button. It's fifth from the top. And when I export this, I want to make sure I don't have drawing or selection or custom. I want to have page selected because that's my page that I made eight and a half by 11. So now when I click the export button, it's going to export just whatever's inside that page. So now I'm going to type in Banksy Earth Man and I'll click OK. And now it's going to export my 8.5 by 11 as a PNG file. And we can see now this is my picture and it's an 8.5 by 11 and that now becomes my art print. So I could use this now on a t-shirt, I could use this on a coffee mug, or I could just sell it as an art print. Basically it's a couple silhouettes on a concrete background. It doesn't need to be a concrete background. You could put it on top of a can or on a canvas background for example. So I hope you found that helpful. Very easy walkthrough. I love making Banksy prints. They do actually sell. I've made some what I call quote unquote original art simply by doing stencils and kind of having a fun imagination you know, you can make some sales. So I hope you found that helpful. Love it if you click the like button, throw in a question down at the bottom, and thank you so much for watching. Here's another video on how you can up your art game in the digital world. Thanks a lot for watching.